there she will sit for now. Hey guys, gonna do a quick triage in this video while I play musical chairs down here in the basement. This is a Zenith porthole that was dropped off for restoration and I think it is awesome. <laughs> it's one of my favorite cabinet designs I've seen so far. Nice big 16 inch screen as opposed to the little 12 incher we did a while ago. Uh, I think this might be slightly newer, right about the same time. Um, it's a little different with the knob configuration, uh, the way they cover them up with this panel here. I think this is the zoom feature where you push it in and it expands the picture out. Uh, and these interesting prisms here. One will show you the channel and one volume level, I guess. Um, let me spin it around and show you. It's a little bit different electrically as well. Uh, Condition-wise, uh, we're missing the original knobs, at least, or maybe this is original, but for sure that's not. It's an Admiral knob. Uh, the cabinet has significant finish loss around the bottom. It's just down to the bare mahogany. A little bit of scuffing on this, which I presume is painted metal, kind of a metallic flake paint on that. Top is pretty good, surprisingly. It's kind of rough, but it looks all right. I wonder if somebody took a paintbrush to it and slapped on it. Oh, will get it in better light and uh, take a look at that. Um, there are already, <laughs> there's already a huge issue with this set. Uh, I'll tell you more about that in a second when I spin it around. Uh, but my goal, I can already tell you, I don't care. <laughs> if, uh, I will go to uh, more lengths than usual to get this set working because I really, really like it. Uh, this is from that Big East Coast collection, the second wave. Uh, I don't think it's his favorite set, but it's my favorite set of the second batch, and I think it has the most intrinsic value as well. Oh, hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure somebody took a brush to it. I can see brush marks. I took the brown paint. It kind of looks like wood grain at first, but no, those are just brush marks. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It doesn't look terrible though because it's got a, a good sheen and the color is pretty decent to the rest of it. If it was me, uh, I might just go with it. So what I meant by intrinsic value, I mean if you just left it as is, didn't fix it, didn't restore it, it'd be a very cool piece to have, a good conversation piece, a neat vintagey thing to have. But I would like to make it work. Um, and it's in pretty good condition, uh, I think pop this off in a moment. So it has the, the metal back, which is a cool thing to have. It got a little caved in here. Protects the CRT. <laughs> this isn't uh, all that sturdy, but it is a, a neat metal back that bumps out a bit. Zenith used a strange AC interlock. Non-standard, so I'm glad it's here. So I'll have to put on some new, uh, new uh, AC power cord, but that's that's easy enough to do. It's having that connector that's the important thing. Uh, let me grab some uh, spotlighting so you can see down here better. And I'll grab a screwdriver. Uh, but right away I'll tell you this is different because this has a power transformer. A proper power transformer. The 12-incher I did, the chassis was partially hot. Or, well, the top surface of the chassis was connected to one side of the AC line, the bottom was floating, they had a phenolic sheet in between. There was a power transformer for some of the circuitry, others was hot. This has a full power transformer. They added a, an outboard chassis down below for the power supply. Okay, here is a look inside. So a bit different than that 12-incher. Uh, tuner's on the opposite side. It's still <laughs> a comically large tuner, and I think it's probably similar electrically since it has three tubes like the other. High voltage is a bit different. This has two 6BG6s driving the flyback. 
there's that uh, non-standard AC power cord which apparently is polarized uh, I'm seeing some similarities though it has the same trio of electrolytics down below the CRT neck IF is different though and the other set it was all crammed up towards the front and kind of curved under the picture tube here it's all along the side I imagine they had a little bit more room to play with because the power supply is down below. See, it's got a nice beefy power transformer, maybe two 5U4s, and, well, let's talk about <laughs> some of the ugliness, too. Uh, so first off, we got the ceramic Frankenstein type uh, throw switch here. That's just for the antenna, though. I think it switches between... I was going to say that an internal or an external, but I don't see it having an internal antenna, but maybe between... Uh, a rooftop aerial and a set-top antenna that they had. Um, there, there is a new electrolytic that somebody mounted in, in a, a unique way. They, uh, it's like they just busted the old one off of the phenolic wafer down there. They put some uh, cardboard insulating tape between the two, because I assume it's on phenolic because of the can should not touch the chassis so they used some cardboard and then wrapped it in electrical tape and ran some wires down below that is a way to do it um it's not how i'm gonna do it when i, when I uh, recap it but uh yeah uh we got some nice connectors going here one for the speaker one for the power phone vision connector phone vision that was a pay-per-view paid subscription service that <clears throat> Zenith pioneered. I've read articles about it. I don't remember the exact specifics, but some way you had to place a phone call and it would unscramble the picture. I don't know if you had to leave the phone line on for the duration of the programming or if it would um, do something else. I, I kind of think you did. I think the phone signal supplied the sync pulses. Ah, uh, so, yeah, anyways, that's what that's about. Uh, didn't, didn't go too well. <laughs> May have only been in the Chicago area. Uh, so, here's the issue. Notice the connector's not on the picture tube. Picture tube is dead. It's a real, real, real common problem with these, especially the ones that use the 16 EP4, which I'm pretty sure only Zenith used. Zena sort of had their own picture tube plant, Rowland, Rowland, which they later bought or bought a, a, a primary holding share on more than 50% of it. Um, but when this was made, it may have been more of an independent company. Regardless, it seems like they had an exclusive contract with Zena to make this metal cone picture tube. The problem is it has a different deflection angle than any of the other 16 inch picture tubes the metal cone uh, I believe it is 70 degrees it might be 53 uh, it's gone to air they are impossible to find a replacement for so that's we're dead in the water however I have this guy here I had to part out a working set to scavenge this from sorry to say uh, actually, I parted out two sets that were probably restorable. One was an RCA, one was an Admiral. Far lesser value sets. Uh, cheap finishes, cheap cabinets, just middle-of-the-road models. That's where you get parts from. So, it's red because it's a rebuild. Uh, and it has very good emissions. But uh, notice it has a, a steeper looking angle. Yeah, this is, a, I believe, a 90 degree deflection angle. So the overall length is shorter by uh, probably that much or so. Uh, the front should mount in the same. It's the same diameter, 16 inch. This is a, uh, the insulation that came with it. I could probably uh, use what's there and it'll just plop right down into the mounting. They have this strap around it to hold it snug in place. That's cloth, so that'll conform to a different curvature. The problem, potentially, is the yoke. 
Uh, and then because it's shorter, the focus coil uh, may be <laughs> right at the base of it. Imagine if the base ends here. We need to shove all this forward. Now, usually there is some provision on the chassis where you can loosen up screws and slide stuff around a bit. I've heard it's possible. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. I'm pretty confident I can make it work. Uh, my camera ran out of memory. I kind of forgot where I left off. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to restore this to the best of my ability. And uh, you'll see in a moment there's an extra little bonus to go along with this. Um... I'll discuss options with the owners as far as how the cabinet goes. Uh, I found a photo of a set that's darn near identical um, as far as the missing knob or knobs go, so I know what to look for. And actually, uh, well, I'll just spin this around and show you. I have one of these as well. Uh, I haven't looked at it in a while. I'm going to get them side by side. I believe it has identical chassis to it. So it has a lower power supply. I think the top is the same as well. So I think I will restore them both at the same time. My 16 EP4 story is, I think, a little bit happier. All right, so there she will sit for now with my new shelving system. A little bit of a shame, isn't it? Uh, there's not quite enough space to fit a fourth set in, I think. I'll slide them over. I do have some skinny uh, Admiral consoles down there, but I don't think they would quite fit. Anyways, there is my porthole, which I got, geez, I don't know, 10 years ago now. I suspect at the time it was a higher-end model, price sold more, so it has the fancy doors, it's a bigger cabinet. But, uh, I kind of like this one better. <laughs> I like that it's a little bit smaller and that it's just always out there. This one, when the doors are closed, it just, you don't, you don't get to see it. And with the doors open, they kind of get in the way. They do wrap all the way around, but that, of course, means that you can't have anything next to them, but... So I could I could fold them all fold them all the way back and leave them open all the time if I wanted to. On the plus side, of course, it did protect it uh, all this time. And I think these are the knobs I need for that one. But this one's different. This has a single control panel down the middle and a switch in the cl control cluster. This is uh, identical, I believe, to the 12-inch set I restored a few months ago. Uh, whereas this is uh, somewhat different control configuration. So maybe they're not identical chassis, but I think the power supply chassis are identical. So what did I mean by the picture tube story for mine is a little bit happier. This is also a 16 EP4. The one that's in there has some life left. It's been a few years since I tested it. Probably not that it would produce an image, but not great. However, some years later I was at an estate sale and in the garage they had several TV chassis, just bare chassis. One of them was a porthole chassis, had a 16 EP4 on it, that tested good. Uh, that's been in storage all this time. I hope it's still good. If it's not, I have another 16 GP4. It's not as good as this red one, but I'll try to do the same modification on mine as well. So, there are the two Zenith portals. That is the only one that I've seen for sale in my area, I think, in about 15 years of active collecting. Which kills me all the more that uh, at the swap meet in May, there were two or three portholes. Very, very nice sets. I think they were all 12-inch models. I got no bids. I could have had them for 50 bucks a pop. But I was out of money and out of space in my vehicle. And when I went back this fall, they were gone. So, <laughs> oh well. Uh, that's why all the more reason why I really want to preserve this. I don't think these are particularly rare. Well, all, all these early, late sorry, all these 40s, all these early TVs from the 40s, they're, they're all uncommon. They didn't make as, I see people posting it. Oh, they made millions of these. No, they didn't. 
total TV production in 48, I think was well, uh, maybe less than a million in 49, maybe it was a couple million, three million, across all makes, all models. So these particular models you see up here, they probably made the production runs were in maybe the tens of thousands or thousands, and certainly not millions. But I think the reason that you don't see many of these is the people that have them and have nice ones aren't selling them. Uh, so, anyways, there we go. Uh, so that is it for the triage video on this guy. Um, <laughs> they're not the easiest sets to work on. Uh, I'm very anxious to see it work again. I think it's a very pretty set. Uh, but they, they are challenging, so uh, it'll be an interesting project. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.